And now we get to the Riemann hypothesis. I need to remind you what the Riemann hypothesis says. Wikipedia, what does it say? Riemann hypothesis. The Riemann hypothesis is, first of all, a conjecture. People think it's true, but nobody's proved it to be true. All numerical evidence seems to point to its truth, but nobody's come up with a rigorous proof of it. If you proved it, you'd be instantly world famous and get a million dollars as a prize. People who claim to prove it are usually wrong, proven wrong because it's hard, okay? It seems to be true. What does it say? It says the Riemann zeta function, which we've talked about in this class, and I'll remind you what it is, has zeros, roots, places where it equals zero, at only the negative even integers, negative two, negative four, negative six, et cetera. Those are called the trivial zeros. And complex numbers with real part one half. What in the world? Why would this be the most important unsolved problem in math? Partially because it's such a challenge and it leads to lots of interesting math. That's part of why it's the most important unsolved problem in math and, and nobody's ever solved it. it. Just seems so, so it's analyzingly close. But also it turns out because of its applications to number theory, great interest in number theory and prime numbers. Amazingly, like where are prime numbers in here? It doesn't seem like there's anything related to prime numbers. But the zeta function is related to prime numbers amazingly. And um, prime numbers, as I've hinted at, are related to cryptography and keeping your internet transactions secure. So it's all tied together in uh, hard to explain ways. But we can go into believing the hypothesis a little bit with some graphs. First of all, I remind you what the Riemann zeta function is. We saw it come up in considering P series, like this one where P is two. We saw that converge to pi squared over six. Euler was the first person to prove that. That is the same as the zeta function at two i squared over six, and that's no accident because for any value of p, you get zeta of that p, like this p series with p equal to three is zeta of three. That's an abstract representation of what it equals or a definitional representation of what it equals, but it can be approximated. It's about 1.20206 here. Of more interest is graphing the Riemann zeta function, and I could try if I had the time to figure out the real and imaginary parts and graph those and see that they're crossing perpendicularly and stuff. But I'm just gonna graph the absolute value or modulus of the output here as a multivariable calculus function. And notice I'm doing it X going between negative six and hmm, one half and Y going from negative 50 to 50. What are we gonna see? Whoa. Wild looking function. Do notice, okay, x equals one half essentially is this line down here. And notice the function keeps going up and down near that line. And yes, it is just touching zero at certain spots. At least for all numerical purposes, it seems to be touching zero. Make it bigger here. It's a little hard to see, but it is also touching zero at negative integer values of x back here, but it's kind of close to zero overall over there. So this is like some numerical evidence for the Riemann hypothesis. It's not anything close to a proof, but we're kind of seeing that along the line where the real part of the input is one half, that it is seemingly touching zero. If I go past a half, I don't know, to three halves, and Maybe not go so far in the x direction. Uh, do we see the function going back up again is another question here. Might be hard to see. Well, it's kind of hard to see. Um, yeah, I think it is touching zero over here, kind of. Maybe reduce the plot range a bit. It's a little hard to tell, um, but that's what's happening. Real quick, some other subtleties going on here is there is a kind of vertical asymptote in here that's being hinted at right here. That's because the zeta function is undefined when P is one, because you get the harmonic series, which diverges. But why would it converge over here where P 
is less than one or the real part of P is less than one. Um, it involves a real kind of complicated subject called analytic continuation, which is very advanced to define the Riemann zeta function, ultimately, even when P is less than one. And even when P is equal to one, as long as you're not at P equals one itself, even, I meant to say, even when the real part of P is equal to one, as long as you're not at P equals one with the harmonic series, that's the only place it's got this higher dimensional kind of vertical asymptote. Okay, it's a wild subject. All right, have a good day.